life is so short and it's just one of those things that it just scared me tremendously and it has been a while it has been about two or three months now since i've posted a video not necessarily a short yeah just wanted to kind of give an update what's going on in my world what's going on in your world a lot of you all have kept in touch i love to stay in touch you know, but I wanted to give an update on what's going on with my post Manjaro journey. What is my current weight? My current weight is 148 pounds. Um, am I happy at 148 pounds? Absolutely. Absolutely. I purposely am okay with sitting anywhere from 145 pounds to 150 pounds. I, over time, I think I have, in my original videos, I never wanted to go past 147, 148. And I came to groups with just understanding that I like myself, truly like myself at 150 pounds. How I like myself looking in the face and body is really pleasing to me at 150 pounds. <clears throat> I have a little bit more hips. I have a little bit more, my face is a little fuller. Um, I just don't see as much of aging impact in my face and body at this weight. So for those of you who don't know, I have lost 35 pounds on a Manjaro GLP-1 medication. Back in 2023, it was Manjaro. No, I'm not diabetic. Um, back then, I was willing to purchase it monthly, kind of find out my insurance approved of it for a short length of time. And so I didn't have to, I purchased a few doses um, but after that, I did not have to for the rest of the duration of my journey on Manjaro. And so, yeah, I was just blessed and fortunate that my insurance temporarily approved during the time that I coincidentally was on the medication. I had done a lot of research and figured out a doctor who was willing to help me get my PA approved. But anyway, so I, uh, but back to that, um, I've made quite a few videos. I've made a few videos on my Manjaro journey. Um, discussing a lot. If you have not seen those, please revert back so that you can know kind of like where we are today. So again, I lost 35 pounds being on Manjaro 2.5 and uh, 2.5 and 5 milligram last year of 2023. Started on my journey in February of 2023 and ended my journey completely in December. So for six months of the starting from February 2023 to what, July 2023 was the last time I was on a weekly Manjaro shot. After the six months was up, I went from weekly to bi-weekly and then bi-weekly to tri-weekly and then monthly. And then I completely stopped my journey in um, December 2023. And since then, have not taken a Manjaro shot. Have I been close to? Absolutely. There were a few times that I was just like, that I gained some weight and realized, oh, I still have boxes of Manjaro on my refrigerator. Let me just go take one and then fought to see and test and go through trials of, can I really still lose the weight without necessarily gaining? And so I passed those temptations. To me, Manjaro is addicting. Uh, and the reason that I say that is because it's so easy to take a shot and just kind of like hit a reset button where you kind of lose a good three to five pounds. I know people will say, oh no, it's not. It's so much. You still have to work hard. You do. And I'm not knocking that. I'm just saying three to five pounds and you haven't taken a shot in months will be super easy for me. Now, after the five pounds will be very difficult to continue to lose that weight. But that first three to five pounds is usually like just inflammation and, 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 and fluid and all of the other jazz, right? So I have been so tempted to do that at times, but I did not. And I'm so glad that I didn't because I've learned that my body can work itself out and figure out what's going on if I remain somewhat consistent, somewhat do the things that I have learned to do while I was being on Manjaro. I have learned a lot of what and how to drop weight the proper way, um, eating protein and the veggies and making sure that um, I stay up on the protein and all of that slight working out with muscle and a lot of walking, lots of water, um, hydration, 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 a little bit of this and that. And I've kind of learned. It's been a while since I posted a video about my Manjaro journey, but through these past few months, I have somewhat been maintaining. I got up as high as to like 153 pounds, like I told you guys before. And I did it again, um, I think about a month and a half ago. And I was able to completely just 
do jump back on what I was supposed to be doing and lost the weight again. So for me, it's vacations. It's partying it's when i'm going through it and i don't i don't want to say partying all the time i just have a lot of friends i'm very social i'm also a tiktoker a lot of what i do on tiktok when it comes to like networking and things like that i tend to go to and just let loose and you know i just need to be a little bit more consistent um and try my best to of course still have fun live life but in moderation and sometimes i can overdo it and i tend to gain a little weight and then i'm sitting here crying and trying to figure out cortisol level rises and i can't lose for a week or two and i'm like i just want to grab a shot and then i just figure it out so but yeah i you know it's been it's something that i'm learning i'm still learning um but if i ever come to a point because at some point i will be going through like perimenopause and menopause and things like this um yeah, I'm sure that there are going to be difficult times, which is why I would like to increase my muscle mass and things like that, just to kind of be prepared for those sorts of things. Um, but I'm sure I, there may be times that look maybe a little bit more challenging for me. And guess what? I will call my doctor and say, here, prescribe me zip bound. Okay, prescribe me zip bound. Now, like I said, I still have access for now of Manjaro still left in my refrigerator from when I had insurance. They start expiring in March. I'm going to call Eli Lilly and see, hey, how long past the three months? If you guys know, let me know. But how long past the three months? I can still keep them as a just-in-case sort of thing. Um, so I'm going to figure that part out, and I will eventually at some point. And, um, but, but besides from that, if not, the plan is to get prescribed zip bound by my doctor, and I will go and pick me up a box and have that box, probably a 2.5 milligram, um, in my refrigerator and use it as needed. Just use it as needed. And I don't want to ever go over that five pound uh, goal, which for me now that I have kind of pushed it up a little bit, because for me, 150 pounds is absolutely perfect cosmetically looking on the outside. For my BMI, I should be around 145, 144. For a person that's 5'4", um, but I like myself at 150 pounds. I just don't want to get to 150 pounds only because only because once I start allowing myself to get to 150, I'll be allowing myself to get to 155. I've already moved it up three pounds. You know what I mean? Like I've already moved it up three pounds. So I'm not going to move it up anymore. 150 is the max. That is my cutoff. That is my grown woman look. I look good at 150 pounds. Now, do I want to still change my body composition when it comes to muscle absolutely like i want to be more muscular 150 pounds i don't want to have like fat you know it's just one of those things like i still want to tone i want to every time i lift up and move my hands like i want to be able to see muscle but for the most part you know i love everything else about it everything else about me i pretty much like cosmetically um for the exception of i would love to get rid of more back fat I hate my back fat. I hate my back fat. It's just one of those areas, regardless of how much weight I lose, it's gonna still be there. <laughs> so I've been considering lipo for the back. Uh, while I'm there, I might as well just trim a little bit more on the waistline, but do I have to? No, no, it's really just the back for me. But I, I, I mean, if I'm already asleep, I might as well get that. But I'm not sure if I am. It's still just one of those things, it's, it's a thought. I'm getting to a point where I just don't want to be sick, hurt, ill go down under the knife again because i have been under the knife for liposuction but i looked amazing with that lipo um and i and i think my husband was just jealous i joke with him about that all the time but um because as soon as i lost that weight and i thought i was that girl i was i was that girl okay i was that girl that lipo hit and i went to miami for it so those guys know how to i've always had somewhat of a butt but not the lipo just accentuated because he did lower back. I loved it. At the time, I was 150 pounds. Okay, so I'm, I'm there. My waistline is not as as it was when I was 150 pounds last time. Okay, but yeah, I, I do. My stomach is still flat, all of that jazz. It's just the waistline itself. I liked the transition between small waist and a little bit more hips. You know what I mean? Like I loved that look. 
But health wise, I'm doing amazing. I literally just um I literally just left the doctor because I'm getting ready to leave my job. And um I wanted to do is just make sure that I was healthy because I'm the one who covers insurance for my family right now. So I'm gonna take off for a few months and we're probably gonna go try to jump on some other kind of insurance temporarily, private insurance temporarily, um, until I go back to work. But I just wanna take off for a few months and you know enjoy life. Had a few health scares again with, um, you know, I told you guys that my mother has breast cancer and she lives with me. And so I went for another breast mammogram and I'm considered high risk because of my mom, although I took the BRAC test or whatever test it was to see if I have the gene and it came up negative, I still, you know, they still consider me high risk. So definitely get, do all the works on me, <laughs> you know what I mean, to make sure. So um, I missed my mammogram by four months and you guys finally said let me go because I'm gonna leave this job and don't ever do that but yeah so I went and got a mammogram and they found a mass on my breast this is the second time this has happened the first time it was scar tissue the second time um it was scar tissue from a breast shot that I got years ago in my 20s and um so this go around it was a cyst thankfully but so I've just been having some like scares and I don't know what's up I was and it had me freaking out because I, how am I gonna take care of my mom how am I gonna take care of my kids I'm so at a place where I'm just happy and I just you know I'm happy with life I'm just happy to be here and life is so short and just I don't even want to start crying but you know all you think about is your kids <sighs> And, you know, it's a couple of my friends who follow me, so they're probably going to call me after this. Like, why didn't you tell me you were going through this? I just didn't want to tell anybody because I hate the pity party sort of thing. <clears throat> and anyway, so I forgot what I was talking about. I went to the doctor and just got like a whole workup of everything. All my numbers are still good. Like I said, the breast gear, which thankfully came back. After doing more thorough diagnosis, they realized that it was a cyst. And so I say all of that to say, take care of everybody's, you know, while we're on these medications, you know, we have to stay hydrated. I'm sure you guys are aware of that, but we have to stay hydrated while we're on these medications. I don't know if you've gone to some of my past videos, but I originally, probably the first or second video, I suffered with um, heart palpitations on the medication and I was just so sad because I thought I was going to have to get off, but I went through my cardiologist and got, you know, a whole markup and that was good. Come to find out I was dehydrated. And, um, you know, I started drinking a lot more, staying hydrated, and the heart palpitations went away. Um, that's probably been one of my, um, one of the worst experiences of being on this medication. Definitely the worst for me. I didn't really have any other true symptoms other than heart palpitations. Like, I'm trying to think. Didn't get nauseous. Did, constipation. I had that too. That was tough too. Um, I got on lenses. But I think that was it. Those were my main two things. And, you know, so heart palpitations did suck big time. Um, my pancreatic levels kind of went up short term and then went back down. After I noticed, I was just like staying hydrated and just kind of really paying attention to my body. But I'm going to be honest with you. Just go while you're on this medication. This is, you know, while we're talking about scares and health scares and stuff like that. Just make sure you're going I went every three, four months. My doctor, she knows that I'm a hypochondriac and I love her because she understands. She understands. She understands my anxiety. When I was on my journal, taking this medication, like sometimes my anxiety would heighten the minute I feel something different about myself. Like, oh, my heart, my this. I was just listening to too much, paying attention to too much. But, um, you know, so I stayed in the doctor, basically. All that to say, I stayed in the doctor <laughs> uh, every three, four months. Hey, what do you want me to do today? She she started asking me. She knows how I am. Like, I study a lot. I do a lot of research, study a lot. Like, I pay attention to everything in my body. And that's not a good thing, really. It's really not because it causes anxiety. Um, So, for that little six months, I was like, God, please, if you could just help me get through these six months, I lose all the weight that I want to lose and then I will get off and I will just, you know, this, this and that because 
I didn't like having to while I was on last year was the first time I had to take anxiety medicine at least once a month. And I'm not feeling that. I'm not one of those girls like, I'm in pain. I won't take Tylenol. I will sit there and deal with the pain. My husband's like, would you take some Tylenol? Would you take some Motrin? I just don't like to put medication in my body. But I know I need that at times. because I just, I feel like, you know, that hits the reset button for me. And it works. And I know how to take a medication like that and not let it control me. But I say that to say, like, you find a really good doctor, your doctor understands you and knows who you are, go to that person, stick with that person, and continuously do all of your tests, stay on top of your health. We are not doing all this weight loss for nothing. You know what I mean? Lose the weight, still go to the doctor, do your follow-ups, go at least every six months while you're on this medication, just to kind of get a markup of, hey, first of all, before you even start, your base numbers before even starting, right? And then throughout, at least every three to six months, I was going every three months, honey. My doctor got to a point where she's like, baby, what do you want? You you, you, want, you want to test your pancreas? What, kind, what, what else do you want? And I was just kind of, I had a list. I have it all in my notes on my phone, like, hey. But, so just do that. Know your status health-wise, your base numbers. Um, but yeah, I have just, I have honestly truly been successful with maintaining my weight, um, purposely gaining two or three pounds. I started off at like 145, 146 as weight that, that I wanted to be at, but I've decided over time just through clothes and wearing clothes and just not liking that I didn't have enough hips and the stuff that I'm used to having, right? Believe it or not, three to five pounds makes all the difference in the world. And I just didn't know that. I was thinking, what, you know? But yeah, so I'm a lot curvier with three more, three to five more pounds. It just hit the right places for me and I'm happy with that. And so my goal is to sit right under 150 pounds, 148, 149, not going over 150. That is my sign. I'm not going to allow myself to get to 180, 175, 180 again. At 5'4", no. For my health, not even just for cosmetic purposes, for my health. I breathe better. Not to say I was just crazy overweight like that, right? But I breathe better. I breathe better. I um I don't have acid reflux like I used to, to the point where I was really concerned with my health. Like, how am I gonna be 5, 10, 15, 20 years from now? I remember Tony Braxton's sister, Tracy Braxton, um, you know, passed away from esophagus cancer. Like I was concerned because I would be, I would choke up at night. It was bad. I was literally choking in acid. And I was concerned that these attacks were gonna just eat up my esophagus. So I, you know, got put on uh, omeprazole. I no longer take omeprazole. I no longer thankfully have these attacks. So yes, what I say Majaro did wonders for me, absolutely, absolutely. Not only that, it just taught me how to take care of my body. So congrats to those who have gotten to a point where they're at maintenance or off of Majaro. Keep me posted on your journeys. Has anybody gotten off yet? I always hear about a lot of people who are still on and how much weight they've lost, but has anybody gotten off yet? What are you doing with maintenance? Are you completely off? What? So, all right, I will talk to y'all later, but I will definitely be catching up. I will no longer be working shortly and I will be able to post a lot more and just kind of like keep you posted. But I will be having a lot of beauty content on here too. So, love y'all. Peace.